So, so just check, is this the right uh, level or shall I speak louder? Yeah, maybe a little bit louder, please. All right, Pale. <laughs> <laughs> In between your level now and the level you were last night after yeah. drinking your rum. All right. Welcome to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. Here are your hosts, the radio vagabond, Pale Bo and TBEX CEO, Rick Calvert. When I started my digital nomad lifestyle in 2016, a week into that, there was a T-Bex, something called T-Bex that I'd never heard of before in Stockholm, and I was in Estonia, so I decided to change the course of my travel a week already a week into my journey and go to Stockholm, and that was my first T-Bex. And, Rick, uh, some of the people I met there was the guy in front of us now, AJ Sud. Did I say your name right? My name is Ajay Sud. Aj- but Ajay's. I'm lovingly called AJ all through the TBEX. I, I I, I, I'll keep calling you AJ then. All right. <laughs> because it's, it's much more easy for me. Sure. I remember that day we did a walking tour uh, around Stockholm uh, taking photos and you were showing us all kinds of tricks and because <laughs> you're such a great photographer. Thank you so much. Yeah, because photography is something that uh, I specialize in. Although I also write. I was starting... I started to write because I was forced to write. I would send my images to the magazines and they'll say, okay, give us 300 words, 500 words, 700 words. So all that got me to start writing. But now I do that decently well. Mm -hmm. I've seen several of your articles, magazine articles that are just beautiful with the writing, but that are enhanced by your photography, which you really are an incredible photographer. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, and we love having you here at TBEX. Um, it's been I, too long, though. Yeah, well, it's been a few years now, <laughs> especially with COVID in the yeah. meantime. And um, I, I poked my head into your session yesterday for just a couple of minutes, and I know nothing about photography. I'm a horrible photographer. You don't want me to take a picture of you and your family, you know, if you're on a tour somewhere. Don't ask me to hold the phone. But um, you were talking about wide-angle lenses, and the session officially was photographing landscapes and architecture using wide angle. And in just, I don't know, about five minutes, I learned several things about the difference between a normal lens and a wide angle lens. Um, how, how, how many years have you been a photographer? How long did it take you to learn all the things that you know about photography? And did you, did you have firm, formal training or did you just learned it from experience? Well, it's been a long journey. In fact, when I was 11, my father gave me a, a box camera, a TLR. And it was a Kodak Brownie Flash 2. In that, you will hold the camera close to your uh, You look down to see out? And you used to look down to check out the frame and the frame will be inverted Our younger audience has definitely probably never seen a camera like that unless they're a a photo bug, right? Shutter bug, I think they call it. So so I started with that. Uh, Unfortunately, the film rolls were expensive and that camera with one film roll, it was a 620mm film, which means in one roll I could get only eight negatives or eight frames. So that's how I started. And ours was a a typical Indian middle class family. So not many, too many resources could be spent on that. So I gave up photography in after a couple of years. But then when my first daughter was born, that's when I picked up another camera and started shooting. And uh, But the fact, AJ, that you remember the model of the camera when you were 11, the model of the film... When you were eleven, I can't remember the name of anything I, from when I was eleven. No, no, must you either you know you have a photographic memory? <laughs> <laughs> you like how I did that, yeah. or there must be something about photography that just always resonated with you since you were even a small boy. You're right. In fact, it is. I remember those things because I was too passionate about it. Yeah. So I picked up photography again when I turned thirty-two, and my daughter was born. Wow. And ever since, uh, till I continued in my corporate life, till I turned 50, for all my meetings, all my tours, everything, 
I will always have a camera with me, and I'll stop the car somewhere. Whatever I come came across as a good scene or a good sight, I'll just stop the car, take an image, then move on. And uh, whatever I know of photography, I've learnt it on my own. Sure, so I've, all self-taught. All self-taught, and uh, sure, I've had chats with photographer friends who I knew from advertising days because I was in advertising for about twenty-seven years. So, but those were sporadic chats. So, and you otherwise. just asked them questions about yeah, lenses and film and exposure time and those kind of things. Discussed things as to what is wrong with this or what is right with that, and so on and so forth. So, those were more to do with the art side of photography and not the craft side, because craft side is all about how to control your camera. Mm-hmm. It's about your shutter speeds and apertures and so on and so forth. Whereas the art side of photography is where you make a photo. So my discussions with them were mostly around the art of photography rather than the craft. So that's. So I would say those discussions have helped to a great de- degree. So that has also been uh, one of the steps I have taken to understand and learn more. I know, I know that. Um You have so many skills on a big DSLR camera, but you are not religious that that is the only thing because you also embrace taking photos with your phone. Yes, I do. In fact, uh, it is not just in this trip, for example. I've not brought a DSLR. No, I've got a, a point and shoot. It's a Leica point and shoot. But till date, uh, in the first four days of being here. I have shot only on my phone because iPhone 13 is a decent enough resolution for reproducing online anyway. Yeah, that's the one I have. Right. So, uh, so I'm I'm open to shooting with anything. It's ultimately your um, eye that helps you frame a good shot. So, whether it's a camera or a mobile phone, it does not matter. So, you know, Pally wears glasses. And I don't have an eye for photography at all, <laughs> but you definitely have technical knowledge, right? Incredible technical knowledge, but you have a beautiful eye for photography. When I look at your photographs, I just I love them. They're they're things of beauty, and I know you take pictures of architecture and and nature and things like that. But you know, we've all like again this morning's keynote. We had all those examples of everybody taking the same picture of a mountain. Um, I'm certain, uh, AJ, that if your picture was up there, it would have stood out amongst those other ones. Well, uh, uh, thanks for uh, that. Uh, as a compliment, I take. You but, can send uh, me the money later, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, sure. If you have not been able to create a different photograph of an oft-seen object, then you are somewhere failing somewhat in being a photographer you're not doing justice to it you need to have a unique eye everyone has a unique eye you need to actually utilize it while you are capturing the shots and uh, you have to all the time keep in mind that ultimately these photographs are nothing but a two dimensional capture so there is only a height and a width you have to also make sure therefore the every shot that you take You are able to give it a perception of the third dimension, which is the depth. So, as a photographer, if you remember those things, and you make sure that your subject is the hero of the image, and the, your viewer's eye only travels to that subject, then you're home. Mm. So, you're saying if the, you take a landscape, try to see if you can have something in the foreground, like a, a branch or a rock or a person. That is fine. I'm saying that is uh, the typical landscape thing. First of all, when you are actually capturing a landscape, what is it that's capturing, uh, catching your eye? Uh, see, human eye is a very deceptive organ. Yeah. We have a way of ignoring things which are not attractive, even in the same scene. And what we see, we find it beautiful because that's how we have sent the signal to the brain. That's not so with the camera. Camera captures everything. And that may not be all attractive, so you need to first understand what your eye has liked, and then try and frame an image 
which naturally will turn out a little more attractive than a usual casual snapshot and then after when you get back with the photos do you do a lot of editing with them do you enhance the colors uh, do you put filters on see I, the, f- I, I have, the reason I'm asking because I have a, ten, uh, a feeling that the trend of having too many filters on Instagram is slowly dying out and you still see them. Sometimes it just becomes so much on there that it looks unreal. Okay, I've never used filters in any of my images. What I do is I first do some sorting because I shoot bursts. Mm-hmm. If there is dynamism in the scene, then things move fast. Yeah. So I shoot bursts, and, you can and then do that select on your f- a then you, select a good image. You can do that on the phone. Uh, you can well, do that on the phone. You can do that the on the yes. Or something yes, like that. Yeah. you can do it on the phone. You can do it on the camera. Yeah. In those bursts, I'll then select one image. It takes me about thirty seconds to process it now, because uh, I know exactly what I need to do to that image to make it pop, or bring it as close to what my eyes. So, so what are the main things that you go and tweak? Sorry for getting a little bit technical no here. Issues, uh, no issues. Because I have I have Photoshop, and there can be many other things. Well, Photoshop you... is actually a photo manipulation tool, okay. whereas photo processing or editing should be done in a tool like Lightroom, which okay. is Lightroom. Adobe software. Yeah, yeah Adobe hmm. software. Also uh, Adobe. Uh, in that, what are you trying to do? See our eyes. Can uh, they have a twenty stop uh, dynamic range, which means the darkest spot being X, twenty times X will be not twenty times, doubling twenty times. Okay, is what eyes capture, which means X is the darkest. One point zero two four million is the brightest. <laughs> so one to one point two four. Million zero to four million. When it comes to cameras, they can at best go from one to twenty thousand or forty thousand. Wow! So the dynamic range that human eye has is lot larger. So what I try to do is I try to match the dynamic range of the shot with what the eyes saw by increasing the blacks and uh, increasing the whites and taking the distance between the two. Farther away mm-hmm. to make it pop mm-hmm. and bring it to what I saw. So, uh, the other night we were at the speaker uh, reception and we were all taking photos and video of the guys, the fire dancers in the rain, you know, twirling sticks of fire mm-hmm. around. And AJ was standing next to me and he goes, "You know, it looks better if you do this in slow mo." And I'm like. My phone has slow mo. I didn't even know my phone would do that. So, I uh, AJ showed me how, and I did it. I took my picture. I'm like, wow, that looks super cool. But then I saw his picture, and mine looks like dog shit compared to his. <laughs> <laughs> Were you taking the same picture of the same guy at the same it time? So annoying, on a cam- right? Both on a camera, <laughs> and his is so much better. So, uh, so my question is, other yeah. than again, I'm horrible, is. Can somebody learn to do what you do? Or is that something, again, having the eye that you have, and I heard what you said, you're translating what your eye sees, the thing that stands out from all of the ugly part to the beautiful thing that your eye recognizes, to translate that to the camera. So now when I look at your picture, I see what you saw. Can I learn how to do that? Or am I just, you know, I, I'm, there's no hope for me? I would say yes and no. There are things involved in this. One is how much passion do you have to actually imbibe it, to actually learn it. So it, a lot is dependent on that. And uh, second bit is how much patience you have to learn it. Because... Uh, Like I said, everybody has a unique eye. Sitting in this room, if I was to shoot, let's say, one table, and sober to shoot, uh, sober Pale to shoot, and you to shoot, no two shots will be same. Right. Because our eye is unique. The yeah. way we capture or look at things is unique. So that uniqueness is something if you can 
cultivate it and turn it into your signature style or the way you look at things and then also learn the technical side of it and the art part of it which is composing the frame and you know ensuring there are no unnecessary inclusions and ensuring that those are excluded and so on and so forth. once you are able to do all of that sure you can learn anybody can learn so the short answer is no in my case <laughs> no rick i said passion and patience yes i that's yes. the key yeah it's it's you have to work really hard at it right and you um again i, I think you made an excellent point um aj where will people find you where where do we find you on social media, website, that sort of stuff? Where can we see well, the photos? Sure. Well, my Instagram handle is uh, Travelure. T R A V E L U R E. Travelure. Yeah. Right. So it's lure of travel, basically. Yeah. And uh, my website is also Travelure. So In India. A lot of my work mm-hmm. you can see there. Yeah. In fact, there are more than three hundred posts on my website, and my Instagram has about. 2200 or more photographs i've been posting one photo a day for the last 6 years mm wow without skipping a day that is pretty good so your your website is that it uh, all is that travel stories or is website it website is about making destinations desirable okay. so any place that i visit any story that i find fascinating there yeah. i share it with my readers yeah Yeah. Before we end up, I have um, a little fun fact about uh, AJ, and that is that he collects T-shirts from Hard Rock, and uh, he's wearing the Stockholm. Uh, very appropriate. Since oh, that from was the what I was, restaurant uh, and uh, hotel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I was talking about in the beginning when we met uh, the other night, it was uh, a, uh, it was Hard Rock uh, Vienna, and <laughs> you have seventy of those. Yeah, roughly, <laughs> roughly seventy of these. Yeah. Yeah, and with that fun fact. Yeah, AJ. Again, it's great to have you on the podcast, and thank you so much for coming and sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your artistic vision with us at TBEX. We really appreciate it. It's a privilege being here, and it's a privilege knowing you guys. We'll see you next time. Sure. You've been listening to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. This episode of Travel Matters was hosted by TBEX CEO Rick Calvert and Radio Vagabond Palabo, and produced by RadioGuru.co.uk. See more about upcoming TBEX events on TBEXCon.com. You can follow Palabo on theradiovagabond.com.